Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're gonna continue our rocket, uh, rocket time saying, uh, robotic series, and today we're gonna talk about hydraulic systems. So let's dive right into it. Now, question becomes, why the heck you wanna use hydraulic? First of all, it's simple. Now, here's the the fact. Like, if I have to take three major system of robotics, first is motor, second is uh, pneumatics, basically compressed air, third is hydraulic. So, hydraulic would be in between. Uh, basically, it's not as simple as compressed air, but it is not as complex as uh, you know stepper motors, stepper servos, and uh, driver circuits and all that. So, it is relatively simple. That is one very big advantage, and it is very powerful. Like, it is the definition of power. Basically, hydraulic power it's on a whole different magnitude like there is no motor circuit that can even come close to the power density of these puppies like this is very powerful to give you a context of this uh, think of this way like if you try to have a motor here in this axis and try to replicate its power yeah the motor will become bigger than the arm itself so it is very powerful and it is very controllable that's how you can see like people uh, you know utilizing this without advanced computer controls they can just like you know use knobs levers uh, valves and all that and they can control it it is a very manageable beast like it is very powerful like you have to understand like there are press uh, that can produce like 1000 ton to 10000 ton so there are things that are very powerful but but it is a manageable beast so first thing first and foremost thing the how you see hydraulics in your day-to-day -day life is basically hydraulics cylinder now the cylinder is very powerful like you can see them into like uh, bridges also because many bridges now have hydraulic uh, dampness basically they have simple things and they have a, like a small hole from which a uh, hydraulic fluid will be forced through it will heat it up like it will go as hot as like 100 to 200 degrees Celsius. but this can like literally the deck of the road can vibrate and this can handle a lot of uh, newtons basically it can absorb a lot of physical shock so they are very powerful like there is no discussion about the power ability of this like if this puppy can't handle it there is almost nothing that can do that so it is very powerful and it is simple plus reliable like the in terms of reliability these probably exceed almost any other system we have like uh, in terms of let's say motor robotics and all that we have to make them in a clean environment we have to um, keep them in a clean environment. Like, of course we put dust guard uh, as many covers as we can do but these things we utilize them in construction site we utilize them in mining industry so you have to understand unclean environments uh, unsanitary environment but somehow these people uh, you know these still work like they are very robust and reliable and in terms of precision they are precise enough like uh, they can like they do not have suffered them from the same problem of pneumatic system where you have to like only two settings either like you know fully extracted or fully interacted like uh, they have much more control like you can be like okay stop no little bit back like and some people have shown some extreme ability where using uh, basically excavator they are like you know just uh, pressing a lighter cigarette without breaking it so it is precise enough okay what the heck drives that like in case of air we have very simple thing you don't have to think about it by any air compressor it will work as long as it has like you know enough capacity and pressure it will work however uh, when you're talking about hydraulic you have to understand this hydraulic simply means liquid liquid are by design by inherent nature uncompressible like most of the liquids are uncompressible like uh, oil and water they are flat out uncompressible that simply means if you have one liter of let's say uh, oil and you take that or uh, let's say one liter of bottle and you put it into like deepest depth of ocean it will still be one liter like if you did that with the air, air of course it will be compressed you did that with many solids that will be also compacted but in terms of liquid yeah flat out nothing will happen and that's why we generally uh, you know when you have submergibles basically uh, unmanned uh, uh, you know deep sea vehicles they are generally filled with oil so they can go very deep like uh, without requiring like you know pressurized hull so it is uh, used in that way so you have to understand we cannot use compression here however we can utilize the luxury of pressure so you will have a motor like this you will have uh, basically two psi from your reservoir coming here nothing fancy is just coming here one liter per minute let's say and outside it will still go one liter per second however the psi would have been gone from like you know from two psi to 200 psi that's up to you like uh, depending on design some uh, motors can create even higher pressures uh, and some pumps have rated as like you know 10,000 psi and all that so you have to understand that like we convert rotational energy into hydraulic pressure that's what's happening that this is the heart of almost every uh, hydraulic system you see where you convert the rotational energy be it from motor be it from a generator be it from a diesel system or whatever have you we convert the hydraulic and uh, basically rotational energy into hydraulic pressure that hydraulic pressure is converted into useful motion by hydraulic cylinders 
so that's what we do now there is another advantage to this because of the inherent design principles and all that it is very high in terms of power to weight ratio think of it this way like if i give you hydraulic motor that is like 100 horsepower in terms of output you can hold it in your hand there is no 100 horsepower motor that you can hold in your hand like again you can say like you know a bit bigger or you have to have schwarzenegger hands but you get the point it's like uh, in terms of power to weight ratio it's mind-bogglingly different scale like uh, these motors like they, they are big they are generally used for very heavy mi mining equipments and all that and they produce like insane amount of horsepower like 1000 horsepower 2000 horsepower 5000 horsepower sometimes even higher than that so in terms of hydraulic pumps uh, and pumps and basically they are uh, interchangeable in some designs not all of them uh, most of them can be interchanged because of the hydrodynamics itself so you can have a pump or a motor and both of them are ludicrously high in terms of power to weight ratio so you, you can have an excavator that has like you know this big diesel engine like big powerful engine and then you have this tiny pump so hydraulic pumps are the heart of the system then we come to the aspect that you must be familiar with the fact that hydraulics is kind of old like we have been utilizing this for almost a hundred years more than that so what can we expect in the future basically uh, you have to understand in terms of efficiency we are quite efficient like we, we are there like we are in the 90 percent, uh, percent range but uh, there is one inherent limitation like the uh, most of the complex hydraulic system utilize what we call a valve box basically something like this now where you have valve control and all that now we know how to build this but problem is because it's a fluid and it's a fluid you want to give it a smooth curve you don't want to give it a jagged edge like tick 90 degree now turn this just reduces a little bit of efficiency it act, acts as a flow uh, limitation so uh, utilizing 3d metal printing because you have to understand hydraulic fluid will be still under pressure here also because it still would be like you know 100 to 500 psi whatever the circuit system is so they have they want to use 3d metal printing to make a smoother valve block this will add a bit more efficiency and again because uh, right now we cannot do very complicated system because uh, we can't drill like you know inside the metal within another hole and all that so there is a limitation with cnc machines uh, if we can make a very high level 3d strong like in terms of robust system we can make very complicated systems even more complicated than what we have right now so 3d uh, valve mechanism is like you know it's a one way where uh, research is being done to make it more better then we come to the aspect that uh, is happening in a slower scale but it is happening brick by brick day by day it's that we are making compact design possible like right now you can just go uh, in a shop and buy a motor system which has a hydraulic pump uh, integrated into it and get whatever pr pressure that you want like 15 psi whatever whatever have you but here's the if you uh, told to any machine shop that was dealing with hydraulics uh, this was like you know 50 years ago they will laugh at you like not because like physics is stopping it it's just that we, we did not have the uh, enough know-how enough knowledge of fluid dynamics and all that to make it compact now this is one easy example second uh, think of it this way like uh, planes also utilize uh, hydraulics extensively now in uh, customer aviation it's not a big issue however when you're talking about fighter jet space is in a premium basically fighter jets are very compact so uh, the older system was like again you have your motor you had your like uh, pumps and then you have cylinders on the wing surfaces and all that now the newer system is that they will have a compact unit itself completely enclosed all they will send to it is electricity they will have the motor pump and the hydraulic cylinder in one unit so that way uh, it is very compact and like they just have to make sure the space is there in the basically winglets and they don't have to like have entire complicated plumbing and all that so there are improvements in terms of making it more compact making it far more efficient using 3d printing so there is still some room of uh, you know improvements now again if uh, this is so good and awesome is there any side effect of course every system has side effects so this also has the side effect it has side effect of being inherently slow now why the heck it is inherently slow? basically it has to be slow is think of it this way we are doing uh, we many people call it uh, you know uh, basically system the hydraulic system as a force multiplier now that is technically true but uh, you have to understand there are no free lunches you cannot be like okay i am putting like 500 newtons and i am getting uh, 5000 newton on the other end that's not how physics works so what's happening here basically the easiest way to understand this is think of it this way in terms of electricity basically same way you take a voltage you increase the voltage you reduce the ampere same is happening here so generally uh, the way we describe it is in travel distance so let's say you have a hydraulic car press and you're like you know you're doing this so you uh, the small cylinder that you have the uh, that is on your end user end you are uh, moving it like let's say 10 centimeter but the car end again you have you are barely exerting let's say 50 kilo but it's uh, exerting 500 kilo on that so what will happen is like uh, 
10 centimeter of travel will be turned into one centimeter of travel on the other end so that's how it's working it basically that is the reason because that uh, 100 horsepower to 500 horsepower uh, basically uh, engine there it cannot magically create enough power that you can just like you know remove a tree like that it does not have that power so uh, the motor does that and over time like over time it's like okay 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 it adds pressure over time now again when i'm saying over time i do not mean like over a course of hour i still mean in seconds but you have to understand that like electric motor can apply that much power instantaneously not instantaneously but you get the idea like inherently this is slow because you are like piling things up on top of it then in terms of precision anybody who has seen this like you know how much effort it takes to like you know just get it just right now again experience helps with that but it's you cannot never expect this to be as precise as a welding robot generally used for car manufacturing it will never be as precise not only you have to understand that like by design is taking time to do whatever it has to do it also suffers from uh, expansion and contraction so basically temperature based the oil itself is uncompressible quote unquote but it does change uh, its volume if temperature goes up or down Very very little very little but it does change temperature by default making it let's say your uh, during daytime your robots were like very precise awesome uh, in the morning everything was awesome but during night you started on temperature went down the robots are not doing what they're supposed to do and it could be very subtle and you, there are many precise system where you can compensate for that but you have to understand this like by design it cannot be as precise as a motor system and in terms of piping now again electrical motors and all that they also have issues with wiring but you have to understand in when you're talking about wire you do not worry about uh, wire as in like what will happen if i bend it all you have to worry about is like is the insulation intact or not that's the only thing you have to worry about it again you have to make sure that it's not you know taunt outside or something like that but here you have to make sure the bend radius is maintained same as pneumatic system because if these puppy are kinked basically you folded it too tightly it can explode and i do do not mean it in a jokey way it will explode it has that kind of pressure and they also wear out like uh, you can have a motorized robot system with uh, wiring and all that the, that wiring could last for 20 to 30 years here in terms of uh, you know hydraulic hoses they are generally changed every five to ten years so you have to understand piping system on these puppies are a very uh, tedious job basically it's not something that you put and forget you have to be like uh, keep checking it regularly if you are lucky it, if it bursts all it will do is leak out pressure but be mindful if anybody is uh, right in front of it it will injure it will not explode but it will injure the person if uh, in front so there are certain problems and limitation with this so this was my presentation on uh, hydraulic system i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i would urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to uh, basically reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching